Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Hamid Wasei, has vowed not to withdraw from the speakership race of the 10th National Assembly. Wasei met with President Buhari at the presidential villa earlier today. It says the advisory uh, nature of the letter uh, by the National Working Committee uh, to zone the positions contradicts the 1999 Constitution, Section 14, as amended. The composition of government of Nigeria or any of its agencies shall be carried out in such a manner as to reflect the federal character of Nigeria, thereby ensuring there shall be no predominance of persons from a few state or from a few ethnic or in that government or any of its agencies. The main purpose and trust of that provision is to promote peace, harmony, and unity among Nigerians. And we have six presiding officers in the country, for God's sake. You should be aware that we have six geopolitical zones. I'm not just speaking for myself. You can bring deputy senior president, you can bring deputy speaker, speaker to the, that zone. You cannot neglect us, even though we have given one of the best outing in terms of voting and support to the government. I think we are all asking for a sensitive and realistic. I want to tell you I am the race, and by the grace of God, I'm going to go get to the race conclusively. I have not done it or step down for anybody. Ahmed Wase there, and despite efforts by the leadership of the All Progressives Congress to persuade party members to support its choice for the leadership of the National Assembly, where we've seen individual contenders just like Wase there, not giving up the ambition. What's central to this is the claim of marginalization by all the zones laying claim to the leadership of the National Assembly. Well, which zones are being marginalized? We have in the studio our Rice News Analyst Frank Tete, who will help us <laughs> try to dissect the claims of marginalization by all zones who are laying claims to the National Assembly leadership. Barrister Frank Tete, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the My program. Pleasure. So tonight we're coming from the area of marginalization. And of course, we've seen Wasi and even uh, Gardi, who both are from Plato State. They're saying, you know what? They're not central. We gave you the highest number of states that's followed by uh, just following the uh, southwest. So we deserve the speakership. So talk to us about you know, this <laughs> claim, especially having at the back of the mind that the APC's national chairman is also from the North Central. Well, you know, you can't fault Ahmed Wasse's argument that you have six geopolitical zones in Nigeria and then you have six principal offices in the country at the federal level and he expectedly in the spirit of section 14 subsection 2 which is which actually typifies federal character these positions should be spread in such a manner that reflects you know a sense that would not give a sense of uh, marginalization to any group particularly major groups and it, it there is wisdom in dividing nigeria into these six geopolitical zones but again one more interesting thing is that the All Progressive Congress is expected to reflect these geopolitical balancing. And, you know, but what it turns out to be is that when you raise the issue of uh, marginalization, actually you would have thought that the, the Niger Deltas are the ones who have been crying marginalization, but we've now seen that marginalization cuts across and beyond minorities. Now, it, in this case, particularly in the, with regards to the speakership position, Wase has a sense of entitlement. He feels he deserves it. Another sense of another kind of emilocon because having considered to uh, Honorable Bajame, Femi Bajame Amala in the past, I mean, he, he, uh, to become deputy senate, uh, pres I mean, uh, speaker rather than actually contesting with him, and having served five terms, in the, he will be in his fifth the term, fifth, yeah. and then having served meritoriously so in various committees and having seen himself as you know a, a, a repository of the. A, the, the mind of the National Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives, he feels that he deserves it. However, when you talk about marginalization, let's start with the Southeast. The Southeast and then move on to the South, not, I mean, the North Central. The North Central suf uh, su currently suffers the most because when you look at Wase, who is a Deputy Speaker now, to think that the North Central with its massive voting block and its ma ma major dedication to the All Progressive Con Congress will be neglected again for this Northwest. Then Wase in other forums has actually you know, deprecated and decried the fact that 
it looks like a form of imposition by the powers that be, in this case, the president-elect. And that's the reason why he is staunchly against the party's position. And then when this very poor, puerile, I would say, argument that, oh, but the chairman of the APC comes from the North uh, Central. No, that cannot, that's not tenable. We all know how... Uh, whimsical presidents in the past have dealt with national chairman of uh, ruling parties. You just they, re they, they remove them with a the slight of a hand. They are practically irrelevant when it comes to decision making. But we're dealing with principal positions in the National Assembly, and the North Centre has been consistently left out from the speakership position. And that's the reason why they are trying to reenact what actually happened to President Woodlock Jonathan in 2011. The fact that the PDP, which is supposed to be the master of geo uh, geopolitical balancing, decided that the speakership in 2011, 2011 must go to the southwest. But we saw an Ahmed, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, according to B.C. Akande in his book, My, My Participation, Bola Ahmed Tinubu decided and made sure that the southwest voted against Mulika Takande against the interest of the PDP, against the interest of President Gulag Jonathan, despite the fact that the president went out of his way to go and beg Tinubu, because at that time, B.C. Akonde and the rest of Tinubu saw that it was not fair that even one of their own Mulika Takonde should be the speaker. So they voted, and that's how Tambua came, came out. And for a long time, persistently, from the, following uh, uh, Masari, uh, we saw Tambua, and then the Northwest has persistently, consistently produced the speaker. So Ahmed Wase has said that, look, you can't, you must reflect geopolitical balancing in this case, by giving it to the North Central. And he appears to be quite confident with this G7 al alignment. Uh, something might just happen in the like of uh, what happened to Good Luck Jonathan in 2011. Interesting. Okay, uh, uh, Barista Tete, uh, uh, we appreciate your insight on this matter. But then you also want to look at the Section 14, Subsection 4 that you, uh, uh, that you talked about. Okay, when we come to Subsection 4, it talks about... Uh, encouraging the diversity, acknowledging the diversity of the Nigerian people and carrying everybody along uh, with a sense of belonging and loyalty. That's fine. But then you also want to think of if you want to achieve that in integrating the different uh, peoples that we have in Nigeria, uh, why is it so difficult for, uh, for them to, to follow this uh, document? And if this is the least they could do at this point, and if they cannot achieve this, if they cannot uh, acknowledge this uh, particular uh, part of the document, how do you then expect them uh, to uh, properly have respect for the document and other part of the representation when, uh, when they resume? You know, interestingly, you know, that part of the Constitution comes under Chapter 2, which does not actually require any form of enforcement, mm -hmm. but it's sort of w a, a persuasive uh, aspect that, okay. that is a, like a policy document for which government must follow. Mm -hmm. However, what is, what, what is important there is that the, the, a party must realize that if it continues to you know, carry out zoning in such a micro, microscopic manner mm -hmm. by mentioning names, Akpabio, uh, uh, mentioning Tajuddin, uh, Abbas. You know, what you're essentially doing is imposition of a certain number of persons, thereby defeating the aim of the uh, of government of the kind of government that we run in Nigeria, which is which is meant to be uh, to, to carry out some form of checks and balancing. I recall Ahmed Wase is insisting that he will continue despite the party's position because he supposes that the idea of what is being called zoning now is actually not zoning, but a sort of imposition which will actually defeat the aim of a federal government. That's and that's the reason. Let, let me jump in. Yes. So let me jump in. That's exactly my point because it's beginning to look like they're setting aside the constitution to uh, have more respect for vested interest and imposition over and beyond what the constitution stipulates. So if they cannot even follow uh, the provision in the constitution at this point, at this, at this initial stage, what gives us the confidence that they will when they get in? It portends a very dangerous situation in the sense that nepotism and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, overriding, 
interest or against that that, that is constitutional and that for the well-being of Nigeria that is, you know, driving very, you know, myopic interest of individuals will now prevail. That will create instability. In fact, mm -hmm. many are foreseeing a very a tough time ahead for President Bola, uh, President-elect Bola Metinubu because of this the zoning formula that the party, seemingly the party, because the persons believe that it is Tinubu's agenda, yet riding on, with the facade of the party. Again, and that's the reason why the, the many party loyalists, dead, die-hard loyalists like uh, the, 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 uh, the deputy speaker, mm. are daring to say no, and they've to the extent we're able to convince the national chairman of uh, the, uh, Abla Yadamu to say, look, this actually requires a review because definitely it, it, it becomes clear that what? if this party goes ahead to flex its muscles, to impose hmm. its, the, the leaders that it wants, because it's not zoning it. So it's not even zoning it's it to zoning zones, it to individuals. but it is actually no, imposing individuals, and at that's the end wrong. Of the day, at the end of the day, when we look at all of this, one wonders where's the place of competence, you know, mm. because all we hear is it's our turn, it's the zone that should produce it. But you know what? Unfortunately, we are out of time because I was going to actually ask you about the capacity of Wasi himself. Uh, Wasi, you know Wasi, like, 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 like William Wilberforce. The conversation <laughs> definitely is ongoing because we still have, of course, a couple we of days five time, before you know, the ten. Because of consistency, you know. Consistency Consistency, and then, does that really and mean that you and have then experience all it takes? The problem of, you know, poor, poor turnover in the National Assembly, it, you see, the, the institutional memory is lost. William Weberforce stayed in the British Parliament for 50 years what? to achieve the abolition of slave trade. So mm. the, when you see a particular individual kept on be, uh, being returned to the National Assembly, it is because he's driving a particular interest Agenda. that Current favors his people. people. So such people. consistencies, such institutional memory, such federal appeal of that kind of character will mean for stability. I, my, my, I just hope that the president-elect doesn't have that kind of topsy-turvy right. know, situation with uh, the party Time members because of this zoning formula. We'll wait and see, Marissa Frank, even the U.S. president, Joe Biden, was you know in Congress for such a long time before he went to the executive. Um, for now, we'll say thank you for your in-depth analysis on the program tonight. <laughs>